I'll be showing the brand new whiteboard in Microsoft Teams. The whiteboard has been completely updated with a bunch of cool new features and I'm going to show you how they work. So let's get started. I'm here in a Teams meeting and I'll go up to the share tray and click it and I'll choose Microsoft Whiteboard. This launches the brand new whiteboard. Now there's people in this meeting and I can choose to make it collaborative or just present on the whiteboard where only I can edit. I'm going to choose present on the whiteboard, read only for everyone else because I'm going to show some things and I don't want them messing with my stuff. So click present whiteboard. The layout of the new whiteboard has changed a bit. You still have ink tools across the top, but you have a bunch of creation tools over on the left hand panel right here. And you can turn things on and off. So to hide the ink tools, I just click here. There's also a shortcut, Alt W, and click it again to make the ink tools reappear. Click the plus to make that creation tools bar go away. Click plus again to bring it back. So some simple things. Also in the upper left, you can rename your whiteboard. So I'll click here and I'm going to rename this one Mike's Whiteboard Demo and click here to turn back to the selection tool. In the upper right, you still have the gear for settings. So you can do things like export your whiteboard and other features that I'll show a little bit later, including letting other people collaborate and edit. To start out though, I'm going to show my favorite new whiteboard feature, which is templates. I click here and there's a set of beautiful templates that you can explore that make it really easy to get started. So let's say we're going to go into brainstorming. There's some beautiful options here. I'll choose an affinity diagram and then click and then click again on the whiteboard and it adds this nice looking affinity diagram. And if you have people that are working together, you can collaborate and people can drag things all around like that. And we'll clear this out. If I go back over here and click the back button, there's a bunch of other templates, problem solving, a bunch of really cool ones. Click back, design and research, and you can explore everything. There's even workshops, games, and learning. So I'll go into learning here, and maybe I wanna do a KWL board. Click here, what you know, what you wanna know, and what you wanna learn. So a lot of really cool options in templates, and there's going to be more templates added in the near future. You still have some of the basic options like notes. If I click here, I can easily click and add a sticky note. There are groups of sticky notes. So I click here and I can add groups of sticky notes, get some blue ones. And it's really easy to click and drag these around the board or size them bigger. So a lot of different options for your notes. Obviously, Whiteboard is great for brainstorming and sticky notes. Now, if I click on a note, I have a couple options. I can edit, so I can type in here. There's my text. Hey, maybe I maybe wanna make that a little bit bigger. I can delete, I can change a color. So maybe I wanna make this one, I'll make it orange. And there's also an option here if you wanna bring to front or back. So right now, this is a little bit behind those green notes. We'll bring it to the front and now it's on top of that one so I can overlay really easy. So that send to front and back is pretty handy when you're doing a lot of work on that whiteboard. Hit the back button. Now we're also gonna look at another great new feature that is adding documents to your page. We have this in the Windows 10 app, but we haven't had it in the Teams whiteboard, which is in the web. Let's clear out this board really quick. I'm gonna go here and click the lasso tool, and I'm gonna click and drag a big lasso circle around all the stuff on the page. And now I just go right here and click delete. All done. Go back here to click the selection tool again. Now let's go add some documents. So I'm gonna click here, and here are all my files. I'm gonna to go to my files right here. I have some files. You can upload some files if you want directly from the whiteboard into here. You can even change the view. But I've got a PowerPoint deck, I've got an Amazon Rainforest, and I might have a couple other things. So let's say I wanna put my PowerPoint system deck onto the page. I'm gonna select this and go down here and choose Select. And what this does is it blows out all seven slides so I can choose what slides I want. I could select all and inject all these slides onto the page, but I'm not gonna do that. I just want this one right here. And I'll choose insert one of seven pages. Now that PowerPoint slide is right here on my whiteboard. If I wanna go up here and do inking, maybe I choose the red pen, click again to open up the menu. I wanna make this pen a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna leave it as arrow here and we'll close. And now I'm just gonna draw a nice big arrow like that pointing to Saturn, or if I want to point right here to Neptune, it makes the arrow for me. And if I want to go here and choose Galaxy, because we are looking at a galaxy, click once to select, click again to open up the pen tool here. I'm going to make it really thick, and we're going to make a two-way arrow. And now I'm going to click right here and draw, and it makes two arrows pointing, so I didn't have to draw those arrows. This is a really handy way to be able to annotate documents. You can also put in PDFs or Word documents. So I'll go in here and click Documents and go to My Files. And I'll choose the Amazon Rainforest on this one and choose Select. Similar to PowerPoint, you get both 
pages. So I'm going to click this page here and choose insert page. There's my Amazon rainforest page. I'm going to drag this up here right on top of my slide. And in this case, I'll go up here and choose the highlighter. And now I can highlight different parts of my document. So really handy to be able to annotate and share great information, whether it's PowerPoints, PDFs, Word documents, and other file types. And this is a brand new capability for the Teams version of Whiteboard. And we'll clear this out. Another update to Whiteboard and Teams is the ability to insert multiple images onto your Whiteboard at the same time. So I'll go here and click Images. So I have a set of images here. I've got Michael Scott, my TPS cover sheet, and the Amazon Rainforest image. And I've multi-selected by holding down the control key and clicking. I'm gonna click Open here, and all three images get inserted on the page at the same time. It used to be you could only insert one image at a time, but look at this. I've got three images, and they're, they're all pretty powerful images. I don't know if I have a favorite. Maybe my TPS report one is my very favorite. Now, related to that, if you wanna say, Hey folks, we want to vote on which images we like best. Another new feature in Whiteboard is reactions. So I can go here and click reactions and you'll see there are a bunch of options. So if we're having a collaborative Whiteboard session and we want to do a quick vote, we can have everybody do a thumbs up on their favorite image. So what I do is I click on the add like and I go over here and then I click again on the TPS report. And there's a little thumbs up and maybe there's people who have a favorite on Michael Scott and you can size and make that a little bit bigger. Or I'm like, you know, I don't like the Amazon rainforest, boo rainforest, you know, put a big X there if you want. So reactions are a great way to get a quick pulse of your whiteboard, especially in that collaborative session. Now, if I just want to type out on my whiteboard, I can click text and I just click anywhere. I just type my name and hey, there's Mike Dolphson. I can select it all. I can drag this much bigger. So this is the Mike Tholfson TPS report right here. I've got some other options again with the send it back in front and edit. If I want to change the color of the text, make that purple. That's really easy to do. This has existed for a while, so nothing too new with the text option. Then we also have shapes. So if I click on shapes here, a lot of the shapes, and you've seen these in the past on whiteboard. I have a little parallelogram. I can click and drag here, and I can make that a little bit wider, change the color, sort of the options that you've seen historically. I got it green. Maybe I just want to have a border that's purple. A few options like that. You also have things like a diamond and a pentagon and a square and a circle and obviously the arrows in different directions. So a lot of the same shapes that we've had in the past. And it's kind of handy again for whiteboard when you're diagramming and drawing different lines and whatnot. The last few things I'll show are some powerful features over in settings. So I'm going to drop the gear here. And now let's say that I want to format the background. If I choose this, there's a bunch of different options and colors to format with. So maybe I want to have a graphing background and maybe I want to make this in green. So you can experiment and choose the type of background and color that you want. And it's quite easy and flexible to be able to change things like that. And we'll close here. Another powerful option with whiteboard is obviously the collaboration aspects. So I'm going to drop this gear and now I'm going to say other participants can edit. So when I turn this on now, Alex and Ella can also do things at the same time. So it looks like Alex has been adding some things here to my whiteboard. Another tip is if you want to scroll in and out, hold down the control key and use your mouse scroll to pull it down. And I'm scrolling way out like this. And if I hold down the control key and scroll up with my mouse button, it zooms it in like this. If I don't have a scroll mouse or I just want to click and drag around, I click on the selection tool and anywhere here on the whiteboard, I click down and drag and you see that little hand appears. Now I just move my mouse around and the whole whiteboard moves. So that's a way to scroll left or scroll up and down. And again, if I want to scroll back and forth and zoom in and out, I can hold down the control key and adjust. Oh, and it looks like someone put I love TPS reports right on top of my image. They must love the next generation designs. Okay, it's time to turn off collaboration. I'll click here and I'm gonna choose this switch to turn that off. So now it is read only again. So when I'm done with my whiteboard, I can choose to export the image. I'll click here and we can do standard resolution or high resolution. We're gonna make it high resolution and click export. Give it a name, Mike Whiteboard and click save. And we'll open it up in the downloads folder, close here. Hey, there's an image of my exported whiteboard right here. Now when I'm all done, the last thing I'll show is where the whiteboard is stored for that Teams meeting. I'll click Stop Presenting and we'll leave the meeting. Back in my calendar, I'm going to click here and choose Edit. And you're going to see the whiteboard is right here. So if I click here, there is my whiteboard. 
Also, if you're wondering where are all the whiteboards stored, let's go to office.com and I'll show you. I'm here in office.com and I'm going to go down to the all apps in the lower left here. Now I'm going to go choose whiteboard. This loads up all the whiteboards you have and right here you'll see Mike's whiteboard demo. So this is where it's stored. If I click the three dot menu, I can delete it or I can edit the name. So all of your whiteboards will end up right in here. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.